Welcome to Authored by Us, a podcast celebrating children's books about characters of color or of different cultural experiences and the authors who bring these diverse works to life. Each week, we invite you to join us as we turn the pages of these bookshelf gems and hear from their creators who understand that stories of diverse experience truly come to life when authored by us. Here's your host, Zenzi Hodge. Greetings and welcome back, listeners. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Authored by Us. I think at some point during childhood, we were always asked what we wanted to be when we grew up. It may be a far cry from what we do today, but it was always great to dream about the possibilities and consider those possibilities. If I were to ask my son, he would probably say something related to science and robotics because that's what he loves. For me, it was always English and music. But I remember that eighth grade science was the best. We had a science fair and my uncle helped me to build a solar powered house. It had a working light and running hot water. This was early green technology. Now, I didn't win the science fair. Some kid built a windmill. He built a whole life-size windmill that probably could power our entire school. But at that point, I realized that all I thought about with science and science careers was that I could either become a science teacher or work as a scientist in a lab. And that really didn't seem like the career for me. Imagine what could have happened if I only knew. This week's author is Tiffany Tichy, and she wants to make sure that no kid has to ever wonder what they can do with their love of science. Tiffany is the author of the book, What Can I Be? STEM Careers from A to Z. Tiffany is a senior mechanical engineer, science, technology, engineering, and math STEM advocate. She's a professional speaker and an international selling, best-selling author. She holds a bachelor degree of science in mechanical engineering, as well as a master's of science degree in engineering management, both from the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. She was born and raised in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and enjoys traveling and being a youth mentor. Welcome to the show, Tiffany. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So I'm so excited to talk with you about your book, What Can I Be? STEM Careers from A to Z, because this is something I probably needed when I was a kid. So tell our listeners about your book. So my book is called What Can I Be? STEM Careers from A to Z. It's a great opportunity for five to eight-year-olds, K through two, to see themselves in many of these type of careers in science, technology, engineering, math. It encourages them and motivates them, ranging from A's for astronaut, all the way to Z's for zoologist, with the doctor, engineering, all different careers. And it just starts with them being able to see themselves in these different type of careers. There are six diverse kids in there. We call them the STEM crew kids, and it introduces them to the different STEM careers. Now, you mentioned STEM, and I know that STEM is an acronym, and I'm familiar with it. But can you talk with our listeners a little bit more about exactly what STEM is and why it's important? Right, so STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Now, of course, I'm kind of biased because I am a part of the engineering as a mechanical engineer, but I love the fact that STEM plays a role with problem solving, decision making, um, the math, and the science. So STEM is important because it is in our everyday lives. Everything we deal with, STEM is a part of it. And so that's why it's important for us to encourage more to go into STEM careers because a lot of these careers we see every day when we wake up, somebody from STEM careers has played a role with it. And so that's why I push the importance of STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. And I like that you say that it's in everything that we do, because I actually started to see that as I went through your book. Now, before I started reading, I tried to guess some of the careers that you would include. Now, I figured that Z would absolutely be zoologist because that's all that I could come up with. But I was pleasantly surprised that you had careers that I didn't even consider. And so this lets us know that there are a vast array of of STEM roles. How did you decide which careers to feature? So the letters can be duplicated. There were some that I had to really decide. So of course, Z is for zoologists, which is correct. (laughs) But the hardest one I will say was Y, which ended up being yacht designer. 
And so that was one of the hardest letters if you had to ask me which one was challenging. Now, of course, there were some duplicates when I mentioned D, and of course I used doctor, but the way that I decided to switch it up, and I couldn't do a dentist, so I ended up using an orthopedic doctor. So there's different methods of ways I try to utilize it, and there's different types of engineering that there. Of course, I have my key ones, which is the civil, mechanical, and electrical, but I introduce other types of engineering, such as robotics engineering, which is a very much a, a popular one that I've known this with the kids because they get to see the different robots that's there. And then other careers, there's also the opportunity for them to see if they love animals, not only the zoologists, but they have veterinarians. So it's mm -hmm. tied in from different science, from biologists to hydrologists. And so who would have thought these different ones? And then when you talk about math and technology, you've got statisticians, which deals with the mm -hmm. math. And then you have the web developers which deals yes. with the information technology. So there is so many opportunities that kids can see, but the way I picked them is there's no method, but I knew that I had to make sure that they were introduced in all different manners and I couldn't duplicate letters, but I found another way to still introduce the different careers and different letters that were introduced in the book. You know, I'm glad that you mentioned yacht designer. So I live in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands, and so we're surrounded by water and there's a large yachting community. And so when I got to why, and I saw yacht design, I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Because while kids sail and they may boat for, rec for com competitive reasons or recreational reasons, the thought of being a yacht designer is something that can also appeal to a child that enjoys the sport of sailing and spends time on the water. And so that was probably the one that surprised me the most because I would not have thought of that. So thank you for introducing that. Oh yeah, that was that was a creative way to still tie in <laughs> the designing side of things because we do yeah. as as far as STEM and designing and problem solving, you've got to be able to build, and that's a part of it when you talk about yacht designers. So thank you. Yes, that was that was an added piece where I had to be creative with. So thank you. Yeah, I remember some years ago, my son's class did a math field trip, and they went out on a boat and they learned about the mechanics of the boat and they learned about the math that goes into the calculation of knots and and speed and so forth so it, it really turned into a classroom activity using the recreation and you're right so stem is in everything that we are introduced to and so this really gives them a chance to see what they can do with whether it's the love of robotics or the love of boating and so children can start to envision careers in those things that first start off as hobbies. So as I was reading the book, I also tried to think about people that I knew that were in these different careers. So I have a good friend that's a mechanical engineer, and I have a friend that's a civil engineer. But I also thought about people that were that were either important in history or people that I didn't know. And as you got to the letter A, the first thing I thought of was astronaut. And so while I may not know a friend that's an astronaut, the one person I always thought of was the late Ronald McNear. So I found that to be important because as the, as a child has read this book, or if they're old enough to read, it prompts some conversation about who do you know that's in that's in this in this particular job. How do you hope that your book will encourage young readers to find people in their community or in history who have these careers so that they can start to see these careers come to life? And it's amazing that you introduced as far as Ronald McNair. That is an awesome example for astronauts. And of course, I start out with a female astronaut in the book because I do know a female astronaut. It's actually in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, with the many of the organizations I'm a part of. Um, what? Delta Sigma Theta and the Link to Incorporate. Her name is Joni Higabagan, and she's the third uh, female astronaut to go into space. And so when you talk about the impact and representation of seeing it, that is one reason why I started off with that, being because I do know one. And because I want more kids to be able to be exposed to it, that is why it's important they see these careers. And the next step is if parents and, and teachers and educators and STEM advocates can introduce in these different types of careers if they come across them or if they want to see some, they're, they're out here. And so introducing them from history ones, like you said, that is key. But also there are some that's living today that they can see. Um, and that's what's key. Representation matters. That is what I push, um, wanting to see more females and underrepresented minorities in these careers because there's a need for it. And so, yes, I do know an astronaut, a female astronaut <laughs> that's walking today uh, that is, is a past one, third uh, female astronaut to go into space. And so it's just empowering when you know somebody 
and it's mm -hmm. just empowering when they can see it for themselves. So when I go to the schools, for example, and I talk to the kids and say, who's met an engineer? A lot of them can raise, they can't raise their hand because they never met one. By the time I've done these hands-on activities, but by the time I've read this book, by the time they see that, I ask that same question, who's met an engineer? And at that point, all hands should go up. So that's what really makes my day when I talk about trying to encourage more to go into these fields of, of careers of STEM. And to let them really consider that someone in their in their life is in one of these jobs. Yes. You know, I I knew people who designed homes when I was a kid, but you didn't always know they were called an architect. Or a child may know that their their parent works in a lab, but they may not realize that their parent is a chemist. And so they're now being introduced to what their parent does or someone in their life does really by seeing these individual careers. Right. And I can speak to it as growing up. My parents, my mom was an educator and my dad was a um, hardworking entrepreneur. He actually, social capital, when you talk about exposure, my mom was an educator. She made sure my brother and I was in math and science, Saturday academies. And then my dad cut hair with the civil engineer. So when you talk about growing up and meeting someone, he said, you need to get your kids into engineering. This, this is a great opportunity for them to know through problem solving. That's the key thing. So I was exposed briefly through Math and Science Saturday Academy, and then with the help of knowing a civil engineer, um, that was key too. So I know you mentioned that the book is for readers five to eight, and you have some illustrations that are so vibrant, and I think it really draws kids in because you see bright colors and you see happy faces. But because it's an A to Z book, you also made it somewhat of a STEM career dictionary because they're not just seeing the illustrations of the jobs, they're also picking up the letters and you've given a definition of each, jo each job. And so I saw it more as a dictionary that they are able to like learn and grow with. A child ages five to eight may not be able to read the word leisure, but as they get older, this is a book that they can read to themselves with, with while first being read to by, by someone else. Why did you decide to have a format that was both illustrated um, a traditional letter-based book and also with definitions. Why, what was your process with designing the book in this way? So when I decided to write the book, I wanted to expose them. And so I had to work with a book team. And so of course the illustrations, I had to work with an illustrator and explain, this is what a utilities engineer looks like. This is what it should look like from the background. So I wanted to make sure they saw what different equipment, how they were dressed and how it played a role with it. So definitely with the illustrations, I wanted to make sure they understood what it looked like in those careers. And so for the definition standpoint, yes, some of those words can be challenging, but it pushes the parents, it pushes um, the kids to be able to ask those questions, go and do some more research on it and give them the opportunity. Now I will say, I thought I could try to do lines. <laughs> <That's what> I, <laughs> said. I said, no, I'm, I'm an engineer. I wrote this book. <laughs> I'm going to stay in my lane. And I was going to try to make it rhyme. But I said, no, let's just define what the career is. And maybe that'll be in future purposes. But that's one reason why I said, okay, I'm just going to stick to learning the, the, the career, learning the alphabet and learning the description of the alphabet. And I stuck to that because I, I needed to keep it simple from that end because they already had to learn the words and everything with it. But I was going to try to rhyme, but I, I couldn't get that far. <laughs> so that's why I went that route as well. You can leave that up to the parents. Let the parents or the teachers decide how to help them rhyme something with utilities okay. engineer. Okay. <laughs> but you, you mentioned how you have each character dressed. And so not only are your STEM crew kids introduced in the beginning of the book, they all take on the jobs. And so, for example, for the utilities engineer, I'm looking at her. And if a child may not understand what a utilities engineer is, she is dressed as a utilities engineer. So for a parent or for a teacher, if they're driving through their community and they see someone, you're in, in the North Carolina area, they may see someone from Duke Energy. And you can point that person out and you can point out the equipment and they're able to draw references. So having the children dress as their careers, I think goes a long way as well for engaging the young reader. Yes, I agree. And it was, it was pulling teeth 
sometimes with the illustrator who tried, I tried to define, who wasn't as familiar with STEM as well, and just let mm -hmm. her know she can't wear she can't wear this in this its career. That's not how it would be in engineering. We wouldn't have to wear this if we're out in the um, construction site. Like certain <laughs> gear, you cannot wear. You have to wear safety glasses. Like these are the different outfits I would have to wear when I'm working on at a plant, which I do work at as a plant. And so there's certain safety perspectives that they've got to learn. And how a doctor would look, how would a veterinarian, mm -hmm. what would be the environment they would be in? There's a geologist, so there are rocks that you have to portray. So what kind of outfit could they be wearing? And so, yes, I definitely took that in consideration when I decided to go with these different careers. And of course, it's diverse kids, um, all different mm -hmm. races and different genders. Yeah. So it's, it shows the diversity. I chose that because this is what I work with from day to day as far as being an engineer and in STEM careers. So I wanted the kids to start early, see the different diverse careers uh, that they can see as well as the individuals with the kids themselves, STEM kids. You, you, you do. You have mixed races, mixed genders, uh, mixed ethnicities. And I think that's important so that any child that reads the book can see themselves in the pages. Because as you said, representation matters and we do not all look alike. So it's important for them to see that. Now, you mentioned pulling teeth. So that kind of led me into my next question, because my favorite career outside of the zoologist, because it starts with a Z, my favorite career was the orthodontist, because that was O. And I think sometimes children are afraid of dentists. And so to see an orthodontist there, I thought that was important. But the image of the child in the chair, that child was smiling. And it, it said to me that an orthodontist not only fix fixes smiles, but it sent a message that going to the dentist or an orthodontist is not something that a child needs to fear. And so that plays double duty for a parent, number one. But I also, I just, it made me think about what are some of the reactions? Are you getting smiles about the book? What are some of the reactions that you're receiving from your young readers or from parents and teachers that have encountered your book so far? Well, yes, I am definitely getting smiles from all over. And it's just interesting. Definitely when I do the big book readings, it's amazing to see the kids, how excited they get. Um, I don't like I, at the beginning of COVID, um, I was definitely doing book readings, going to school visits mm -hmm. and everything. And they would be all excited, happy, coming all jumping on me. <laughs> uh, but now with doing it virtually, it's been a different experience. But at the end of the day, when they get excited and say, oh, I see myself as a veterinarian. I see myself as a robotics engineer. I see myself as zoologist, and it's just like amazing to see that they start to speak those things and see what they could be. And with the parents, just the different pictures, I now have been going back to doing some book fairs and so on site. It's amazing because not only am I an engineer, but I'm an author. And to see their faces to say, so you wrote this? Wow. And I'm like, yes, I wrote this. And you showed on the back of it. Of course, it shows my picture of me and like I wrote it. And so it's just empowering that not only am I introducing them to STEM, but I'm also letting them know, hey, I wrote this and I want you to learn about it. And so it's just been amazing to see the, uh, the responses and the positive responses that's come out of this. And to hear some of the videos, I get some videos of parents having them read the kids reading it and everything too. So it's just amazing uh, to see the response from it and that I'm making an impact at the end of the day. Well, you're definitely making an impact. And it's not just with the book because you added something else that's a compliment to the book. And I always love when there are extra pieces that authors create to, to go along with their books. It's like additional magic. And so you created a couple of additional resources uh, that support or go along with what can I be STEM careers from A to Z. Can you tell us about those additional resources and how they're being used and, you know, what, what has been the, the response from your young readers with those? Right. So I decided to do some co companion books. And what I first did was I made a Spanish, French, and Swahili translated version of it. And so it gives opportunities for more languages to be exposed to the careers. But then I also created a coloring and activity book for it as well. So I took those same careers that's in there, and now the kids can color in it. But I also provided activities that they can do, ranging from mazes to crosswords to tracing to learning their numbers and, and then opportunities for them to do activities. So it's a great opportunity for them to be able to color, but also learn the careers in STEM. And it breaks down from the science, technology, engineering, math, different activities are broken down into there as well. So it's just a good companion. It's a good combination. They can read the descriptions, and then they also can color and see themselves in it and do activities tied to the position itself. So tell us what's next for the STEM crew kids. Well, 
as the swim crew kids have taken off in the book, I've definitely got some more things in play. I definitely want to do some more spinoffs for the swim crew kids, introduce the kids, continue them to learn more about the swim careers. Um, there's more color and activity books that can come from it, breaking it down into the different um, film aspects of it. Then also there's some activity cards, puzzles. There's some more things in the making that I can pull from it. And so I'm just looking forward to being able to continue to allow them to continue to learn more about STEM careers. So the sky's the limit. I do have some podcasts coming, but it's a great opportunity for me to continue to learn, not only from the book, but stem off from the book to make some differences in their lives. Wow. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Tiffany Tichy. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. Authored by Us is made possible by listeners like you. We thank you for your support. Now back to the show. So we're back with Tiffany Tichy. So Tiffany, I love what you were talking about with the, the additional resources that you have to go along with your book. What are some of the other things that you're doing to help teachers specifically integrate what can I be STEM careers from A to Z into their classrooms with young students or students of any age? Right. So of course I have the book, which is a great introduction to all the different careers, but I also have in the making a teacher's guide and I work with a curricular writer. Once again, I learned to stay in my lane. <laughs> I work with a curricular writer who's also been in the school system and a principal and everything too. So it's a great opportunity to tie in each of the different careers broken into science, math, history, English um, language, and it has different activities that the kids can see and start doing worksheets with as well. So I do have a teacher's guide that is coming soon that can be tied in with the different careers that are introduced um, in the book as well, the STEM careers that's introduced in the book. And so that's one way. But of course, they can always utilize the book itself and they can start breaking down the different careers, how they tie in with science, technology, engineering, and math. It starts talking further about it. Doing hands-on activities, um, that's also a STEM off of it that they can do. Like for example, the civil engineer, which deals with towers and structures. I'm always good for doing, and they can do this at home as well, not only just teachers, but doing things at home where also you can pull some things from um, marshmallows to toothpicks and all that. You could generate competitions and decision-making um, process. So definitely those are different things teachers can pull just from the different hands-on activities to tie to the STEM careers itself. Now, you just talked about teachers. Now, as a parent, what can I do to integrate STEM into my child's life at home outside of the, the classroom? Right. So as mentioned, the book has all different STEM careers in it. For example, getting the kids exposed to ro robotics and different things from robotics engineering. So there's different competitions, different activities they can learn about. There's clubs and organizations. I will tell you, I put a plug in for an organization like the National Society of Black Engineers. They have Nancy Junior chapters, which are the younger ones. And so that would be one key one I would say reach out for. Different organizations like SWE, Society of Women Engineers, are great opportunities for exposure to those that's already in the industry, but also how kids can get started with hands-on activities. So NSBE, SWE, um, Society of Hispanic Engineers, there's so many different organizations that if parents could also tap into, partner with, and do different hands-on activities, I think would be key to tie in with a lot of those STEM careers. I like that. And I like being, being hands-on mm -hmm. and just paying attention to the people that you know, you may know an engineer, you may know a geologist, or you may know a yacht designer uh, and being ha introducing your, your child to people in these careers and also being hands-on and finding STEM in, in the various things that you do. So I know, Tiffany, this is not your first book, but it is your first children's book. So tell us about why you chose to tell this particular story at this time. So this, I mean, actually, this, this was my first, this was my first book, ironically, my first book of publishing in general a book. And so I chose to write this book because I see the importance of telling my story. When I decided to be an author, it's all about telling your story. And what better way than to start with the kid and exposing them earlier on. Now, I not only, like you said, did a book with just the children's, but I also did a women empowerment. So as I've gone as far as being that curious girl to being able to be that role model in STEM, I actually did two additional collaborative books with other women, which is the, what they call the anthology books. And it's called 
saving lives while fighting for minds, stories to empower women to win, and then prepaid and power for 40 days to empower the woman within. And I decided to do this because I'm telling my story, encouraging girls, encouraging women to see themselves in these STEM careers and how to be persistent, how to be resistant and be persistent in trying to be a part of this STEM career itself. And so not only do I love the kids, but I love to empower women as well. And so a collaboration of it, I just enjoy trying to tell my story and trying to encourage others to be able to see that they can be it as well. Now, in addition to being an author, you're not only self-published, but you started your own publishing company. And I always find it fascinating when authors decide to take that leap to create an entity to bring their books to life. Can you tell us about your publishing company and then tell us about what took you on that path to, create, to creating that publishing company for this book? Okay. Well, I always thought I wanted to write. I just didn't know when. Um, and then when I wanted to think about what I wanted to write, definitely wanted to tie it in with STEM. And so when I saw the opportunity, which happened on Facebook, there was a challenge on Facebook from Crystal Swan Bates, who's a book coach. And she encouraged those that want to write a book to write your best-selling book in five days, learn the process, learn the publishing process. And so I took on that, that training. And from there, I learned the process of publishing a book. And by publishing a book, I had to create a publishing company so because it is a business. And, and that is what I've learned as far as becoming an author, that this is a business. And you have to be able to do it. So yes, Thrive Edge Publishing is the publishing group as far as the company itself. And from there, I learned the process of writing it, gathering it, working with a book team. When I talk about a book team, staying in my lane, getting an editor, getting a book cover designer, book formatter, and then of course the illustrator. And so from there, I learned how to pull a book together and then be able to upload it and publish it. Um, and it's been number one bestseller. Um, in STEM education, I got the surprise on Christmas Day in 2019, and I've been rolling mm -hmm. since. And so I'm just thankful to be able to, it's definitely in that category that, that, that really was touching and impactful to see it was in the STEM education um, category that I got the number one bestseller in it. So I, it just makes my day from the publishing experience that I've been able to make a difference from it. Now, what would you say is the most challenging part of this whole process? Because there's the writing of the book but then starting your own publishing company. So there's that publishing piece of it. And then something that we also have to do as authors and sometimes as independent authors is the marketing. So of those three, what would you say has been the most challenging part for you with, with bringing your book, not just to life, but bringing it to the forefront? Would it be the, the writing, the publishing or the marketing or something else? The marketing. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I published, I was like, yes, I'm going to get this done. So I had it ready. Like I said, I uploaded and then I brought it out into the world and say, hey, everybody, I've got a book. But I did not plan for my book launch like I expected. Everybody's like, yes, how do I get it? How can I get signed copies? I was just like, whoa, I wasn't ready. <laughs> and so the marketing piece, if you can start my lesson, what I would tell anybody who wants to write and publish, market before you launch, market before you launch. And that was my thing, market before market during as well as market afterwards. It's continually marketing, getting your social media together, getting your website together, being prepared to collect the money. I mean, like I said, it's a business. And so that's what I've learned. That was one of the challenges. I, a lesson learned, definitely market before you book launch and be prepared so then you can be prepared to sell it and be able to promote it. And so everybody can be ready and can tell others about it as well. But I was blessed to be able to promote it. And like I said, got the number one bestseller, but I didn't know what I was getting into, <laughs> but, but definitely knew I wanted to get it out there. And so marketing would be what if you ask one of the challenges and I still am challenged a little bit, but it, I've learned the process and I'm continually learning. It's a continual learning process in, when it comes to marketing itself. And once you put out one book, there's the expectation that something else is coming. So have you started considering what you're going to write next and who your audience is going to be? Right. And that's always the case. Once you get that first one out, everybody's like, okay, so what's next? What's next? What's next? I'm just like, oh, goodness, wait, let me get to this first one. <laughs> and so, of course, I'm like I said, I, the STEM crew kids are in there. So I'm thinking about doing some spinoffs and maybe just tying in with those STEM careers and just maybe going and elaborating more into them. Like for the air, air, airspace one, as far as the, that 
portion of it, going into space, letting them know what does it take to be that? What does it take to go through that? Like I said, that's the science portion. So breaking down some of these careers, breaking down the STEM school kids, I think that's going to be the next step when I talk about writing another book. Now, I know I mentioned at the beginning that you are an international bestselling author, and you mentioned that you just received that accolade in, in December, bestselling in STEM. But you also received some additional uh, acclaim and features through your sorority, our sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and you were featured on the Delta Authors on Tour. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Or tell us a lot about that, because I think that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Yes. So when I published the book, I was like, oh, man, I missed the mark on getting us to the Delta's author story. It already happened. But I had it in my mind. It's like I think about what's how can I make things happen? And I said, I'm going to be on that next one. I'm claiming it. <laughs> and so I was thankful when I was picked and I was chosen. What is this with the Delta author story? It's national. And so what happens is you get it broken down into different regions. So I'm representing the South Atlantic region. And it's just amazing. They picked 12 authors out of the region itself to be able to be a part of the stopping tour. And so it was in Greenville, South Carolina. We just had it as far as a virtual tour. And I mean, we had the VIP, uh, and it was just awesome to have that the day before and then promoting it. It was an awesome experience to be able to promote it. We got to talk about our book. We got to have breakout sessions and really talk to those that were participating in it. It was just amazing just how much they put into promoting Delta authors and just being exposed and, and the sales. It was great. <laughs> when we were promoting it, I was just so amazed at how I got so mm -hmm. much of the support. I mean, it was just mm -hmm. coming in and in and out. It was just like, oh, my goodness. And so it's just a blessing I was able to take part and be represented. And I mean, in my category, as far as with the region I was in, the area I was mm -hmm. in, I had the, a famous celebrity, our honorary member, <laughs> um, Daphne wow. uh, Maxwell Reed, and have her as wow. an author in my segment and just to hear her tell about her book. It was just amazing to have that we had a store for honorary members that's represented in our um, area to represent. And she was a part of our tour. And so being exposed, putting it out there, I think it's been just awesome and experience. And I, I was thankful for the opportunity. It was a good experience. And I'm just thankful I was a part of the Delta's office tour nationally. <laughs> and I'm so excited for you because to see that there was a children's book featured on the tour, I started cheering. It's always good. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. You're listening to Authored by Us. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review so you never miss an episode. Now back to the show with your host, Zenzi Hodge. So we're back with Tiffany Tichi. So Tiffany, tell us where we can find What Can I Be STEM Careers from A to Z and your other books. Yes. So you can find my book at tiffanytichi.com, T-I-F-F-A-N-I-T-E-A-C-H-E-Y.com. That's the fastest way to try to get autographed signed copies. So you definitely could check it out there. As well as you can also check me out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, as well as Walmart and Target online. So you can check those out. And as far as social media, I'm on Instagram and Twitter as at Tiffany Tichi. And then from Facebook, you can look up author Tiffany Tichi and you can look up Tiffany Tichi author on there for the Facebook one. So those are ways you can get in touch with me. Once again, you can check out my website, tiffanytichi.com. And listeners, we will have Tiffany's book featured on the Authored by Us bookshelf, and you can click on the link there to go directly to purchase her book. And her social media handles will be available in her author's profile on our website as well. Now, Tiffany, I read somewhere that you described yourself as a STEM author and a STEM advocate. Why did you choose those descriptors? And what role do these play in guiding you daily as you inspire the next generation of authors as well as the next generation of STEM kids? I consider myself a STEM advocate as well as a STEM author because there's a need. Once again, representation matters. STEM representation matters. And what better way to put it in writing? I want to see more of our STEM books that are out there for these kids. I want to see more of STEM out there for women, underrepresented minorities to see themselves in these type of books and encouraging them. And so that's why I consider myself a STEM author as far as wanting to see more books for literary aspects of it for them to see themselves. And then from an advocacy, there's a need. We got to start early. So I chose to start early 
because third grade is that prime time when we start seeing what's going to happen with that child. And so that's why I chose to go through K through two from an advocacy standpoint for STEM itself. And so that's why I'd like to do it because there's a need. If you look at the numbers and the percentage of statistics, there's a need for STEM. And so I wanted to be that one to represent and encourage more to see themselves as far as in STEM itself. I like to see that you want to inspire others to see where, where they can go. So I, I really like that. Now, what has been the greatest influence on you as a writer and on your writing, but also on you as an engineer and what you're doing with your career? Right. So the greatest influence, I guess, if I had to pick a, a famous author or what, who inspired me, of course, is Maya Angelou. Um, I mean, she did the poetry and everything, too. And so just she's an encourager as far as being inspired, phenomenal woman, being able to know that that's important. Yes. And then just as far as engineering, um, having a seat at the table and who inspires me is, of course, uh, Sor, who's uh, with uh, Shirley Chisholm, Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, who is... Yes who says, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring your folding chair. And so that's who's my inspiration as well. And so when he talks about engineering, we talk about there's a need. That's who's inspired me. She might not be an engineer, but she's engineered the future as far as in general of encouraged more to be able to be represented at the table. And that's what I'm about, making sure everyone has a seat at the table. And definitely in engineering, definitely in STEM itself. I love that you said that Shirley Chisholm engineered a future for, for the rest of us because she absolutely did. <laughs> love it. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to ask this because I ask this of everyone because we're talking about children's books and you wrote a children's book. So it's only fair that we ask you, what was the book or what was the children's book that had the biggest impact on you when you were growing up? <laughs> well, I guess one that comes about is Green Eggs and Ham from Dr. <laughs> But that's the only one that can come up right now. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with how he's made a difference in so many children's lives and the impact that you make all from the words that you write and the pen, you know, that power of the pen and the power of the tongue. And so that's how I say he probably was an inspiration from that standpoint of a book that started off um, from encouraging kids. Now, the rhyming piece, I might not take him, I'll admit that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, the impact that you're making in the pen. So I would say the power of the pen is all through the books. And that's one that definitely encouraged me to know that I can make an impact and be powerful through my pen. Wow. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. You know, you joke about the fact that you stay in your lane. You're not an illustrator. You know, I stayed in my lane. I don't know how to rhyme. But I'm glad that you did not stay in your engineering lane and you ventured out and you decided to write a book about what it is that you know how to do so that you can share it with some other kids. So for thank you for not staying in your lane in that regard. Love it. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Well, Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this episode. It was a pleasure talking with you. It was a pleasure. I really enjoyed reading your book because it just gave me such possibilities of what not what other kids can do, but maybe think about, hey, I could have done this. I could have done that. And what can I be STEM careers from A to Z is truly, it allows a child to see what they can be from A all the way to Z and everything in between. So thank you for bringing forward this amazing book for young readers. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. It has been a pleasure just being able to talk about it and share my journey with you and the audience. So thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure having you here with us. So listeners, as we close the cover on this bookshelf gem, I would love to thank our author, Tiffany Tichi, for spending the time with us to talk about her book, What Can I Be? STEM Careers from A to Z. Also, this episode would not be possible without you, our amazing audience. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We invite you to come back next week as we introduce a new author sharing their book. Until next time, happy reading. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Authored by Us. Every author has a story to tell, and we enjoy bringing their stories to you each week. Whether you are listening as a young reader or are sharing this podcast with the young readers in your life, we are delighted to celebrate these stories inspired by diversity and shared in the voice of their authors. Follow us on social media at Authored by Us and subscribe to our podcast using your favorite podcast app. That way you never miss an episode. Have a gem on your bookshelf that we should have on ours? Visit us online at authoredbyus.com and let us know. Until next time, happy reading.